In this lesson, we're going to go over the subtool palette, as well as a few other basics to ZBrush. Now, when you first launch ZBrush, you'll notice that you don't actually have anything other than this little menu right here that says, basically, load tool, save as, import, clone, clone all subtools, lightbox, and a handful of little buttons here. Well, in order to get access to the rest of your menu, as well as the subtool palette, you have to actually have a model on the screen. So let's start simple. Click on the Golden S and you'll see a whole bunch of little tools available to you. These are pre-built subtools. For this example, let's go ahead and grab the sphere. Drag it onto the canvas. Now, right away you would think, oh, okay, so I can go ahead and sculpt on this thing right now, right? Just, you know, start dragging. Oh, cool, I have spheres. But when you try to rotate, all you do is draw more spheres. When you try to zoom in and out, you're just drawing more spheres. Basically, you're not inside edit mode you're just drawing on the canvas. So in order to enter edit mode and start spinning around your model and maybe start sculpting on it, you have to press edit. Okay, so wait, it's still not spinning. In fact, only one of them is spinning, and that's this one right here. The reason behind that is that it only keeps the very last model you dragged on there as your active model. So to get rid of the rest of these, you're gonna hold control and press N. That will clear your document. You can then, of course, move around, zoom in and out, and rotate. The controls behind that are Alt and click on the screen to move. If you let go of Alt, you can zoom in and out. And of course, to rotate around your object, just simply click anywhere in the black and start moving the mouse around without holding Alt. Okay, so let's get into the subtool palette. Now, the subtool palette is basically a collection of tools that make up a single model. So even though there's only a sphere there currently right now, if you were working on a character, you would have like the head, the shoulders, the belt, the pants, the chest piece, the sword, axe, or you know, basically whatever else made up your character. So what about the rest of these options down here? Well, to get access to these right here, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this sphere so we have more than one subtool. So press duplicate. Notice these lit up. In fact, let's go ahead and duplicate a few more times, like eight or nine. <laughs> okay, so you notice you have a little button here that says List All. It gives you a list of every subtool in your palette. Now this, of course, is in alphabetical order, so if we had like a few of these renamed something else, then you could press on your keyboard whatever letter correspond with the starting letter of that item. So if you wanted to find your belt in here without having to dig through this menu, you could press List All, press B for belt, and as long as your objects are named accordingly, then you could just simply click on the appropriate subtool and it would select it for you. Because again, if you're dealing with like 20 to 30 different subtools in your palette, it can get really, really obnoxious to keep having to scroll up and down inside this thing. It's just a lot easier to use the list all function. Okay, so what do these arrows do? Well, uh, the arrows on top will move your object up and down inside of the list, while the return arrows will just simply move your selection down. In other words, you select the one above or below. It doesn't actually move them inside of your list. Okay. You also have auto reorder. This will reorganize your list according to the complexity of each subtool. So whether it's the most complex at the top to the bottom or the easiest and most simple items at the very top to the most complicated at the bottom. It's basically a sort function. You also have all low and all high. These are basically easy buttons to lower the subdivision levels on all of your subtools or raise them all to the highest. Subdivision levels are found in the geometry palette. Just simply click divide and it will increase the complexity of your mesh. As you can see, this one is really detailed. If you click on any of the other subtools, you'll notice that they're not anywhere near as detailed. And that's because they are a much lower resolution than this one is. This one was subdivided. So as you can see, subdivision levels work on a per tool basis. So if you have a whole bunch of these things, again like 20 to 30 of these, and they're all at a varying resolution, could you imagine having to scroll down to each one and go, okay, drop down to one. Okay, then click on the next, then the next, the next. Yeah, okay, it could get really, really annoying. So again, these are easy buttons for that. Okay, let's move on to Append and Insert. Both of these options allow you to add another model into your subtool collection. So if you click on something like the cube, it'll add it to your list. 
Now the difference between append and insert is that append will just throw it in the list but put it at the very bottom. Whereas insert will put the item directly below whichever subtool you previously had selected. For this example, as you can see, it put it as the second item. Next up is delete, which of course deletes any subtool that you have selected. Keep in mind that uh, you can't undo this operation, so if you delete something, it's kind of semi-permanent, so remember to save often. Then there's group split. So if you have a subtool that has multiple polygroups in it and you want to separate them into more than one subtool, it will turn your groups into subtools. And finally, we have Merge Down, Merge Similar, and Merge Visible, which are pretty self-explanatory. They kind of just fuse multiple tools together depending on a specific trait. So if you press Merge Down, then whichever tool you have selected, it will merge with the one directly below it. If you say Merge Similar, then it'll take all of them that are almost identical in terms of geometry and fuse them together. Merge Visible is pretty much the end all, so you use that to merge all of your subtools together into a final mesh, which can later be exported as a single OBJ. Now keep in mind you can also export each individual subtool as an actual OBJ all on its own. To do this, just go up and say Export. Make sure you have the proper subtool selected and change the name and save it to the appropriate folder. You can then import it directly into Maya or 3D Max or any other program of your choosing. However, if you find that you want to keep working inside of ZBrush and perhaps come back to this model at a later date with all of the subtools intact, just simply go up and say Save As. It'll save as a Z tool. Again, put it in the appropriate folder. That way you can come back to it whenever you want to.